My name is Mihir Vardhan. I'm studying at the University of Illinois. I'm an ECE major and I'm a freshman this year. India went into a three week long full lockdown in the beginning of the pandemic. And my neighborhood had to start shutting down stuff like Amazon deliveries, food deliveries. And that's when someone in my neighborhood pointed me toward UVC sanitization. Um, using UVC light with the right exposure, we can actually disinfect any packages. And some of the technicians in my neighborhood helped me build a big disinfection chamber that later became the Terminator Mega. The Prime Minister's office ordered a Terminator Mega. The army got a few of them. Later on, people kind of started asking me, you know, this thing is way too big for my house. It, it's not even, it doesn't even fit through the front door of my house. So we then made the Terminator Mini which is for homes. Postal services are starting to use boxes like that. More and more people either kept saying, you know, I want a machine smaller or I want a machine bigger or can we sanitize a package this much bigger or can we even sanitize an entire room? The way UVC disinfection works is that you can't just flash a surface with UVC light. You have to make sure it gets the right exposure. It needs time. It needs time to do its job. So we spoke with professors in IIT in India. We spoke to industry professionals. We spoke to engineers. And we finally came up with a number of how fast we can actually move the robot. And that's when the Terminator Turbo was born. It had to be cheap and it had to be fast. We couldn't make a machine for thousands of dollars. And so about two months of building later, we had this machine that was taller than me heavier than most people, and it could sanitize entire rooms. My gym has started using it, my neighborhood's common areas use it, the elevators use it. The Terminator Turbo can be moved around and sanitize rooms much faster than standard disinfection. And we made the entire design such that anyone with even the most basic factory could produce it without having to worry about you know, supply chains crashing down and employees not coming to work because of COVID. We started using windshield wiper motors from old cars. We used batteries from UPSs. You know, we use plywood that's used in furniture. We used encoders from elevators. It's a lot safer for the operator as well. You know, the, the janitors who are spending 24 hours a day just sanitizing stuff for being exposed to really harsh chemicals. The rooms would begin to smell. Chemical costs were going really high. You know, sanitizer was getting expensive because no one was manufacturing enough. And so a robot really answers all those problems. Just cleaning a room reliably, cleaning it fast, safely. The pandemic was definitely a very, um, was definitely a big, a big source of trouble in producing these machines. Um, all of a sudden, shops, the police would come and shut down shops because they were worried of a coronavirus scare. And so all of a sudden, my favorite hardware store is gone and I have to drive two hours to get to the next one. So it, it was small problems like that, but it was nothing we couldn't fix. There are definitely more things we're looking into right now. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of hospital professionals, you know, looking for ways of sanitizing N95 masks, looking at ways of putting on PPE faster. I feel like with UVC, um, I'm not sure if there are many more things I can do, but automating processes with robots in respect to the coronavirus, that's definitely something I'm going to work a lot on when I go back home. So my Thanksgiving break and <laughs> fall break will go into this. Like I, like I said, this isn't a business for me. This is just a passion. I want to make sure I can make the best robots that do their job 100% of the time. And so whenever someone approached me for a Terminator Mini, Mega or a Turbo, um, they would usually pay me up front and that's how we actually got the prototypes out. Ever since I was a young kid, both my parents being electrical engineers kind of let me tinker around with stuff around the house. Um, me and my brother both grew up around that and I guess for me it just stuck. I had a small workshop in the side of my room and I would just build things. Whether it was to teach myself or to teach other people or to make machines, I was always building something. So I started making tutorial videos online on how to start building robots and I slowly turned that into videos of really cool robots or really funny robots just may not do the biggest thing but inspires little kids to get into STEM, start building and that's how I actually formed the robotic society in my school. Flying seven and a half thousand miles in the middle of a global pandemic was definitely not fun but I'm really glad I'm here and I'm really glad I'm in person because now I get to see what this college has to offer me hands-on. Every time you go onto the Illinois website and you see pictures of the ECEB, as a guy who was building stuff out of the corner of his room, the insane equipment in these labs, the buildings, stuff like that is what blows my mind. Stuff like that is what I want to work on and there is no better place to be than Illinois.